From the IHLS studios in Tel Aviv, this is Homeland Security Weekly Report. Hello and welcome to the weekly edition of the Homeland Security Report. I'm David Jones. In today's virtual world, it's well known that cybercrime can jeopardize our privacy, our economy and even our national security. Less well known is an organization, the National Cyber Investigation Joint Task Force, NCI-JTF, is working around the clock to fight the threat. Established in 2008 by a presidential directive and administered by the FBI, the NCI-JTF is also tasked with identifying cyber hackers and understanding their motivations and capabilities. This knowledge is used to disrupt criminal operations, minimize the consequences of intrusions, and to ultimately bring perpetrators to justice. The Israeli Defense Force has diversified the variety of unmanned air systems used in recent military operations. The Spylight Mini UAS, manufactured by Israel's Bluebird Aero Systems, has played an important role in the war on terror this past summer in both Operations Brothers Keeper and Protective Edge. The Spylight Mini UAV provides three to four hours of mission time with an impressive control range of up to 80 kilometers. The Spylight has been in service since 2006 and has already been delivered to many customers worldwide. Raytheon has announced it is testing a new laser-guided 155mm artillery shell, which adds laser designation to GPS guidance in order to provide more targeting options and to better pinpoint targets on the move. The missile system invests in a dual-mode Excalibur variant called Excalibur S. It maintains its GPS guidance system but also adds a laser spot tracker, a seeker that detects laser energy from a laser designator and uses this to guide the shell to its target, said Paul Daniels, business development lead for Excalibur at Raytheon. How can the United States come up with ways to help health workers in Ebola-stricken West Africa while minimizing their risk of infection? One answer that the White House may be exploring is robots. The White House Office of Science and Technology Policy Group will convene a workshop to explain ways to keep health workers in Africa safe through robotics. Robin Murphy, the director of CRASAR, the Center for Robot-Assisted Search and Rescue, specifies some of the jobs robots in the Ebola zone might be assigned. The following points provide a fair indication of what we might soon be asking robots to do in West Africa. Also included are some of the systems that are fulfilling similar roles today, but not necessarily in places like Liberia. Yemen has become the latest export customer for American Scan Eagle UAVs. Yemen has ordered a dozen of these aircraft along with a launcher, control and maintenance equipment. The US is also providing operator and maintenance training. The entire package cost $11 million. Prior to this deal, the United States had already provided Yemen with Raven Micro 4.5 pound UAVs. The Scan Eagle weighs 40 pounds, has a 10 feet wingspan and uses day and night video cameras. Launched by Catapult, the Scan Eagle can be landed via a wing hook that catches a rope hanging from a 50-foot pole. There is also a smaller CLRE, Compact Launch and Recovery System, that will eventually be available for ship use. Scan Eagle can also land on any flat, solid surface. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching this special edition of the Homeland Security Weekly Report. See you at the same time, same place, next week. And remember, for more information, just click the link below.